Today is the last Jumu'ah of uh, Ramadan. This was a time historically Muslims were actually uh, saddened. And now people, unfortunately, there's a lot of people can't wait for the month to end. Uh, and this is not a good sign. People want uh, to go by calendars and have everything fixed and accorded according to their plans and not necessarily according to uh, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has arranged things. Though Islam is having a difficult time in the modern world because it's a religion based on nature, it's based on fitrah, it's based on just human beings living in communities and taking care of one another. It's not based on a nine to five world where everything becomes regulated and regimented. And so Ramadan is one of those times when it becomes really clear how difficult our religion uh, is in the face of the modern world because so many people historically, Muslims took Ramadan and it was a time everything slowed down. But people don't let you slow down. And so people really have a difficult time during Ramadan because they have to go and do all the same things that they're doing normally. Whereas in, in the traditional Muslim world, things slow down. Even now we know in many Muslim countries, things slow down and people say, oh, production is down, everything's down. That's a good thing. Because it's reminding people that this is not about dunya. The Prophet Sallallahu People used to, when they first saw the moon of Ramadan, they shouted for joy. And you could read uh, Titus Burkhart's, he was an eyewitness in Fez, when he said everybody on all the rooftops of the houses would get up to look for the moon. And when they saw the moon of Ramadan, he said one by one, as, as the people saw it, he said shouts came up of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar all over until the whole city on the top of these roofs was saying Allahu Akbar. And then when the end of Ramadan came, people cried. The Prophet Sallallahu Jabir ibn Abdullah was with the Prophet Sallallahu once and it was Jumu'ah. He said, دَخَلْتُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ فِي آخِرِ جُمُعَةٍ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ I came uh, into the Prophet's company and the last Jumu'ah of Ramadan and the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ya Jabir. This is one of the great people of the Ansar. He said, Ya Jabir. Uh, it's the last Friday of Ramadan. فَوَدِّعْهُ Say goodbye to Ramadan. وَقُلْ And say اللَّهُمَّ لَا تَجْعَلْهُ آخِرَ الْأَحْدِ مِنْ صِيَامِنَا إِيَّاهِ Don't let this be the last time we get to fast. Ramadan. لَا تَجْعَلْهُ آخِرَ الْأَحْدِ مِنْ صِيَامِنَا إِيَّاهِ فَإِنْ جَعَلْتُهُ فَجَعَنِي مَرْحُومًا وَلَا تَجَعَنِي مَحْرُومًا But if you decree that this is my last Ramadan, then make me amongst those that you show mercy to, and don't me make me amongst those who are deprived of your mercy. And then he said, if you say this, he said, فَمَنْ قَالَ هَذَا ظَفَرَ بِإِحْدَ الْحُسْنَيَيْنِ Whoever says this, he will get one of two beautiful things. He will get to fast next Ramadan or Allah will forgive him his sins if he takes him during that year. Allahumma la taj'alhu akhir al-ahdi min siyamina iyahu. Allahumma la taj'alhu akhir al-ahdi min siyamina iyahu. Fa in ja'altuhu fa ja'ani marhuman وَلَا تَجْعَنِي مَحْرُومًا the, the blessing of Ramadan amongst many of its blessings is that this Ummah goes back to recitation of Qur'an Tilawat al-Qur'an but one of the things about the Qur'an Tilawa in Arabic means to follow so it's not just reading the Qur'an يَتْسُدُونَ كِتَابَ Allah. They follow the book of Allah. Right? They follow the book of Allah. That's what tilwa, uh, tilwa means one after another, but it also means to follow. So, we're supposed to follow the book of Allah. 
all of the calamities that have afflict, afflicted this ummah have come from abandoning the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَمْرَيْنِ مَا تَمَسِكْتُمْ بِهِمَا لَنْ تَضِلُّ بَعْدِي The two things I left you, the two weighty things I left you. If you cling to them, you won't go astray after me. كتاب الله وعترتي The book of Allah and then my relatives and in a riwayah kitab, that's the sounders, in a riwayah kitab Allah wa sunnata nabiyihi wa kitab Allah wa sunnati The book of Allah and my way. The book of Allah and my way. His way is the Qur'an. Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. Aisha when she was asked, how was the Prophet's character? She said, kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. His character was the Qur'an. So his way, his sunnah is the Qur'an. And now our ummah has deviated from this book. And the Prophet ﷺ, he complained to his Lord, قَالَ الرَّسُولُ إِنَّ قَوْمِ يَتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا My ummah has abandoned this Qur'an. Because it's not enough to recite the huruf. One of the things about the early community is that they actually, not very many of them memorized the Qur'an. Adi Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi said it was rare to find a scholar in Andalusia that memorized the Qur'an. Because Sahaba did not memorize the Qur'an without applying it. It took Sahaba several years to do Baqarah. Because they would do the ayahs and then they would apply them. And until they applied them, they wouldn't do anything else. Because they didn't want to bring on a tribulation. They didn't want the book to curse them when they read it. And this is one of the things in our tradition that's رُبَّ تَعْلِمْ لِلْقُرَانِ وَالْقُرَانِ يَلْعَنُهُ Somebody's reciting the Qur'an and the Qur'an is cursing him because the Qur'an says that there's curses on the liars. So if he's a liar, the book is cursing him. There's curses on the oppressor. If he's an oppressor, the Qur'an is cursing him. If he's cheating in his transactions. We have Muslims that are so upright in all of these outward things of the Islam and then in their transactions there's, there's, that's why the Salaf said, if you want to see a man, don't be fooled by a long beard or a short robe. Throw a dinar in front of him and see how he acts. If you want to see people, see them in their mu'amalat, how they behave. But all of the calamities that have come, how many tribulations on this planet could have been resolved by idfa' billatihi ahsan? How many? Just by idfa' billatihi ahsan. How many calamities could have been avoided if people were just husna speak beautifully to people? The Prophet ﷺ, when when one of the Jews said Sam alaykum hashahu, one of the Jews said Sam alaykum, like they the, some of the people in Medina, the, the munafiqun, and they would say things. That's why the Quran says wala ta'rifanuhum fi lahna al You'll know them by what's what's the context of what's the subtext of what they're saying. So he said, instead of saying salam, or they would say silam. You know, like silam is a big rock. You know, so instead of saying salam, they'd say silam or sam. So when, when they said that Aisha was with the Prophet Sallallahu she got angry because she was, she was Arabiya, ghayra. She had ghayra for the Prophet Sallallahu She got angry and she started saying, you know, and sam on you and la'natullah. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Didn't you hear me? I said, Wa alaykum. He said, Yustajabu li wala yustajabu lahum. That Allah answers my prayer. He doesn't answer their prayers. And he said, Inna Allah yu'ti bil rifq ma la yu'ti bil umf. Allah will give with gentleness what He will never give with harshness. He'll give with mercy what He'll never give with cruelty. Allah is rafiq. You know, everybody now is clamoring for justice. As far as I can tell, that's what we're getting. When you ask for yourself, you ask for mercy. But when you look at others, you ask for justice. You don't truly believe until you love for others what you love for yourself. So if you want mercy for yourself and you want justice for everybody else, you're obviously not loving for your brother what you want for yourself. Because you haven't completed your iman. لا يؤمن لا يكمل إيمان أحدكم. 
the iman of somebody is not complete until you want for others what you want for yourself. Nobody on Arafah, nobody on Laylatul Qadr. What do people say? Allahumma inna ka adrun tuhib al adra fa'adr biya. Oh Allah, you're just, you love justice, so be just with me. Is anybody saying that on Laylatul Qadr? No, because the dua of Laylatul Qadr, Allahumma inna ka afu tuhib al afu fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you forgive, you love to forgive, so forgive me. So that's what you're asking for yourself, but everybody else, Allah ya'atihi ma yastahim. Allah ya'atihi ma yastahim. Give him what he deserves. This, what is that? <coughs> Allah is trying to teach us. If you want God to be merciful with you, if you want him to be forgiving with you, you have to be merciful with others. You have to forgive others. If you want to be, uh, if you want justice with everybody, that's why they said that in Medina, nobody wanted justice because there was love. Rahul Isbahani says, where there's love, there's no need for justice because everybody forgives. But now everybody wants justice. And I'm not saying justice is not important. And I'm not saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah ya'muru bil adil wa ihsan. Right? Allah commands to justice. Right? Nobody's going to deny that. Allah commands to justice. And each of us should be just. But when somebody's not just with us, what does he command to? What does he command to? Right? That's the question. You should be just with everybody. But don't expect justice from other people. That's the nature of dunya. You should be just. Right? Allah commands you. If you judge, if you judge, be just. وَأَن تَأَدُّوا الْأَمَانَةِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا أَن تَأَدُّوا الْأَمَانَةِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَإِنْ حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُ بِالْعَدْلِ To fulfill your oaths with others. Give your amanat to others. The Prophet was called al -Ameen. He was the most just of people. But he was the most merciful of people. He was just with others. In the way he treated them, he gave everybody their due, but he didn't expect his due. And that's why, how many times do we see the Prophet ﷺ, somebody grabs his cloak until you could see the effects on his neck, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, and what does he, does he demand qisas? Does he demand retribution? Lex talionis? No, he forgave the man. And the Prophet was constantly doing this. When the Jew came and insulted him and Omar wanted to kill him, the Prophet him, he said, Omar, you scared this man. He said, go pay him and give him an increase. This is like emotional compensation. Right? He said, give him more than he's due because you scared him. That was our Prophet him. Ramadan is shahar al sabr Where's the patience in our ummah now? Where's the, look at people out there how crazy they are now. All these people have lost their minds. And this is one of the signs the Prophet ﷺ said, Bani Adaya Sa'a, amongst the, 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 the signs of the last hour, he said, Ta'azub al uqul The intellects will go. People lose their minds. The modern world is driving a lot of people mad. Just driving is an insane, it's an insane thing to do. Driving at 70 miles per hour in these massive cars, one person, the Prophet said, Rakibu wahidun shaytan. That one rider is a shaitan. So we've got all these beauty shaitan. That's what the Prophet, I think, he called them. Beauty shaitan. And one of the proofs is that shaitan sits between sun and shade. That's called the qa'datu shaitan. He sits half in sun, half in shade. That's why it's makru to do that. To sit. But in the car, you're sitting there, half of your body's in sun, the other half's in shade. And then it's polluting the planet. All these things. The cars are one of the worst inventions. People love cars. They don't want to give up cars. These people collect cars. You know, I'll be the first one to get rid of this car. It kills 50,000 people just in this country. And that's a war. Every year. Let alone all the poor animals. Like what did they do to deserve that? They're just trying to get across the street. And they get killed. This is the planet we're on. It's, it's gone mad. But this, these are the times that we're in. These are the times. And you have to know the time you live in. A man should know the time that he's in. You should know the time that you're in. And even though we don't expect, I don't expect, we, we should. Those people that they're, they're aware of the adab of Allah. That it can come anytime. 
And we should, we should, the end of time, the Sahaba felt like it was going to happen any time. But we know that there's a lot that will happen because nobody's left that says Allah on the planet. So there's still a lot of people that say Allah. But if you look at the signs now in the Muslim world and look at these things, these should put fear and trepidation in our hearts because these things can come here. Don't think they can't come here. And that's why we should be in a state of gratitude. We should be in a state of, of gratitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even about eating, one of the things about Ramadan, put gratitude. Ya yuhalladina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyahu ta'budun. Oh, you who believe, eat from the good things that Allah has given you. And show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're sincerely worshipping Allah alone. Show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said, God is content that a man eats food and thanks him for it. This content. Kulu wa Eat and drink. Eat and drink. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted these things, but be grateful. Be grateful. We should be in a state of gratitude because there's so much complaining on this planet. We've got a, a, a species now, everybody complains. And the, the Muslims traditionally did not complain about things. They, 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 they were worried about complaining. We have to get back to the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but especially the akhlaq of the Book of Allah. The, the Quran has many things. The Quran tells us of what went before. The Quran tells us what's coming after. So we know the end of, of all of this. We know what happens. Fariq of al Jannah or Fariq of Sa'ir. The groups in hell and the groups in paradise. That's the end of the story. You want to know how this scenario ends? That's it. But the Quran has akhlaq. What's his khuluq? And the Quran is not an easy book. It takes time. You have to sit with the Quran. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مَنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجِدُ فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا The Qur'an is, is, is a book that takes time. إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ فِي كِتَابٍ مَكْنُونَ لَا يَمُسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَحَّرُونَ I mean there's an outward meaning of that, but the Qur'an has ظَهَرٌ وَبَطْنٌ وَحَدٌ وَمَطْلَعٌ many meanings but so the outward meaning that you should be in a state of tahara but the inward meaning if you're not in a spiritual state of tahara you don't have access to the meanings of this book I swear by the positions of the stars it's also the positions of the ayahs there's a miracle of the Quran where these ayahs have been placed great mufassirun have written about this Imam al-Biqa'i in the ninth century wrote an entire book showing how every single verse is positioned to create a complete structure of the Qur'an. He wrote eight volumes on that subject alone. But people don't study the Qur'an. They don't study Arabic language, let alone the Qur'an. Because you can't access the Qur'an without the Arabic language, even though the meanings are available to people. The Ajim have always had access to the meanings of Qur'an. It's one of the beauties of our religion, is that even though you don't have access to Arabic, you have access to the meanings. And that's why the Ajim, their great obsession was the seerah, the non-Arabs. They knew more about the Prophet than the Arabs did because that was their access. They couldn't read the Qur'an, but they could read the living Qur'an. They might not be able to read the book as it was revealed, but they could re read the book as it lived. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is one of the great gifts to this ummah, is the book and the Prophet It's not just the book. Allah could have sent down the book, just given it to people, sent down the book, and then you work it out. But He didn't. He sent a teacher. I was sent as a teacher. I was sent to... Allama means to imprint in you these meanings. So we have to go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The book of Allah is not difficult. Dietary restrictions, not difficult. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمَا وَالْأَحْمَ الْخَنْزِيرِ وَمَا وَهِلَّ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ Imam Malik took that ayah, that's the basic prohibitions are all in that ayah. Very simple. The other ones he saw as makruh. 
But the point is there. There's all the dietary in that one verse. Right? And then, Kulu. Halal al Eat halal and good food. Eat good food. Look for azka ta'am. Look for the purest food. Like in Surah Al-Kahf. He says, find the purest food. Eat good food. Kulu wa sharab wa la tusrifu. It's all there. One of the Coptic doctors, when he heard that verse, he said, Ma taraka nabiyuka shay'an li jalinus. Your Prophet didn't leave anything for Galen. Because most illnesses come from the stomach. And so the, 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 the verse says, eat and drink, but not to excess. Be moderate in your drink. وَالَّذِينِ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يُقْتِرُوا أَوْ يَقْتِرُوا وَلَمْ يُقْتِرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا Economics. You want your economics? It's there in the Quran. When you spend, don't be thrifty and don't be spendthrift. Be between the two. Be moderate. Get what you need. Maybe a little bit extra, but don't be extravagant. The, the economics is there. وَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ أَسْتَطَعَتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاتَ Military defense of a, of a nation is there. Be prepared, because it's a belligerent world. Be prepared. Everything is in the Quran. Imam Ali said, if I lost qati'a min ibl, if I lost a, uh, a herd of camels, I could find it in the Book of Allah. It's this hyperbole. But his point is that everything is there. And the Prophet ﷺ said, towards the end of time, he said, many hadiths about this. And we have to learn these hadiths, because these are times that people become confused. And our Prophet told us about these times so that we wouldn't get confused. People in Syria, there, a lot of people are confused. What does this mean? I thought, isn't it? نحن على الحق جعلت عافية أمته أولها وإن آخرها سيصيبهم بلاء شديد The best part of my Ummah was in the early part because he was there. And the closer to him, the better it is. But he said, but the last part of my ummah would have great difficulties. He, حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفَ رَحِيمٌ He is covetous of us, solicitous for our affairs. He's concerned about us, about our iman. He, don't lose your iman. Because of what you see, this dunya will confuse you. يُصْبِحُ الْحَرِيمُ فِيهَا حَيْرَانٌ the one who has normal intelligence becomes confused by it. And then the atheist comes. The atheist has always been there. They've always been there. And they never said anything different than what they're saying today. And the Muslims, we survived the collapse of Andrews. We had women who were teaching the Quran. Their tongues were cut out for teaching the Quran in the Spanish Inquisition. We survived the Mongol invasion. A million people estimated that were killed just in some of the major cities. The, the streets ran with blood. Libraries were burnt. Imagine how those people, what they were thinking when they saw them all. You know what they were thinking? How the And that's the difference between them and us. They were thinking, this is our wrong actions. We left the book of Allah, and so we get the punishment in the dunya. Why? The adab of my ummah is in this world. It's in this world. In the ummati ummatu marhuma, my ummah has mercy on it. The adab is in this dunya. So when you're looking around, seeing, you look at what's happened to our ummah. The highest corruption rates in Muslim countries, the oppression of our women. They're being oppressed. They're being oppressed in our countries. The mistreatment of children. Look at the schools, the way they're treated in schools. These dictatorial teachers, and then they wonder why they have dictatorial rulers over them. Right? The corruption in the marketplace, the cheating, the lying. I and mean, one of the things that Muslims traditionally, if you were a foreigner, they would always give you a better price. Because they saw it as da'wah. Now, if you're a foreigner, they'll cheat you if you don't know the price of the market. And that's why in the books of fiqh, they say... The Barani, the person from outside, if he, if, he, if he finds that the man cheated him, if he asks him, is this the price of the souk? And then he finds down the road that the price is not. He can take it back. It's one of the few instances where you can return a good that you purchase according to the books of fiqh. 
And then the highest download searches, pornographic searches coming from Muslim countries. This total degradation of women. Well, what's happened? We're the people that honored women. لا يكرمهن إلا كريم ولا يهينهن إلا لئيم Nobody honors women except honorable people. This is our ummah. So we have to go back to the book of Allah. You, most of the people in here, I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume all of them, Hassan Allah. You're good people. You're here because it's Juma. It's the last Juma of Ramadan. You know, but we have to look collectively at our ummah. So I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about collectively so that we can understand what's happening and why it's happening. We have to understand this thing because you will lose your iman. The Prophet ﷺ said that towards the end of time, he said, There's one. He said, that he will wake up in the morning a believer, by the end of the day he'll be a disbeliever. He'll go to sleep a believer, by the time he wakes up he's a disbeliever. And then he said, the one sitting is better than the one standing. In the riwayah, the one lying down and muttajah, the one lying down. So the stiller you are in that time, the better off you are. It's not a time of movement. It's a time of stillness. Because everybody is crazy. And then at the end of the hadith, he said, so, so, قِسِيَكُمْ Break your bowstrings. وَضْرِبُ سِيُوبُكُمْ بِالْحِجَارَةِ and, and break the swords. وَكُنْ كَخَيْرِ ibn Adam, And be like the best of the two sons of Adam. Habil, what did he say? لَيْنْ بَسَطَ يَدَكَ لِتَقْتُرِنِي مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطًا يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِيَقْتُرَكَ إِنِّي أَخَافَ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ If you raise your hand to kill me, I'm not raising my hand to kill you because I fear Allah the Lord of the world. He's saying, be like that son. Imam al-Baghawi in his tafsir of that ayah, he said the first sharia was non-violence. It was a prohibition. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَ أَوْ يُقَاتِلُونَ أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا Permission was granted for those to fight. Permission. It's a ruhsa. It's not azima. The azima is Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman ibn Affan took the azima because he was a ul al-azmi. He said, I'm not going to raise my hand. If you raise your hand to kill me, I'm not going to raise my hand to kill you. And he died a shaheed in Ramadan, fasting. And he was told, he saw in a dream, you're going to break your fast with us, Uthman. Allahu Akbar. But that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. Why? Because the Prophet was not a violent person, nor did he seek war. He said, don't desire to meet an enemy. But if you have to, be brave. In other words, if it's forced upon you. There's a hadith in Al-Bukhari. If it's forced upon now we've got these young people, all they want to do is go out and fight. This is sickness in people's hearts. So this, this, is, this is our religion. Why? Because the Prophet used violence to defend himself and to establish a community. But when there's nothing going to be established, when there's no point for the violence, then what's the alternative? If you raise your hand to kill me, I'm not going to raise my hand to kill you. Why? Because it's nihilistic. There's no benefit. And I'm not saying if somebody comes into your house, if they try to harm you, self-defense is a right. But in fitna, don't join any side because there's no sides to join. There's no sides to join. There's no right side. Just Muslims killing Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ said, Slowly, the disease of civilization will creep up upon you. Slowly. It just crawls. It's creeping. What are they? Envy and hatred. Enmity. 
envy and enmity. These are diseases of the heart. Right? And then he said, can I tell you something? That He said, لَن تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تَحَبُّ You won't enter paradise until you love one another. We are commanded to love one another. We should love one another. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى We're brothers of different mothers. We are brothers and sisters. We have different skin colors. That's signs of God's magnificence and His greatness. We have different tongues as signs of His greatness. But we're from Benu Adam. We have the same father and mother. And Allah told us to love one another. And the Prophet ﷺ said, you will not enter paradise until you love one another. He said, can I tell you something that if you do it, you will love one another? Afshu salam bainakum. Spread peace. <coughs> spread peace. Just spread peace. Be a peacemaker. He's a khatum al jahiduna qalu salama. Right? Just spread peace. Don't get in altercations with people. Peace. Allahum inni sa'im. That's the purpose to teach you taqwa. What do you say when you're fasting and somebody's trying to create a problem? I'm fasting. Right? But that's a madrasa. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه فإن الله غفور رحيم الحمد لله This is the, uh, the, the last Juma so we, we have possibly a few more days of Ramadan for those who go by I'm not going to condemn anybody going by calculation you know we, we prefer the seeing the moon and that was the dominant position throughout the history of Islam, but you know, people, everybody, is a difficult time, is a trying time, so we're not going to make it a source of enmity or fighting. People make their ishtihad and, and may Allah accept all of us. Uh, but for those of us who are going to see, is possibly a few more days of Ramadan. But when the, the uh, Ramadan, your fasting is mu'allaqun, it's, it's suspended until you pay zakat al fitr So just as a reminder, on the Eid, uh, you should pay, I think it's around the, the masjid here, ten dollars, is that, yeah. So, the Hanafi Madhab, it's a rahmah from Allah, the Hanafi Madhab permits paying uh, monetary, the other ones they give grain or dates or some stable of the uh, uh, sa'a that you pay for each one member of your family that you're responsible for. So, you, if you have five kids in your house uh, and your wife and yourself, so you've got seventy, uh, you've got seventy dollars around. So, um, but th that's important to remember that zakat al fitr because it's a time to remember the poor people. That's the purpose of it. Is Ramadan one of the most important things of Ramadan is to recognize other people are suffering. So that's important. Uh, and finally, alina bi kitab Allah, inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the ability to continue uh, reciting the Quran like we recited in Ramadan. Now you're going to deal with shaitan because okay, you know that some of them definitely got locked up. Right, because you started doing things you weren't able to do the rest of the year, so you know the reality of that hadith, right? But but the uh, uh, they're going to be back, all right. But Allah yalla anhum inshallah and give us strength to fight them. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala yitqabil minna, Allahumma yitqabil minna siyamana wa qiyamana, wa ghfir lana taqsirana ya rahman rahimin. اللهم جعلنا جعل هذا القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء همومنا وأحزاننا يا الله اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عن إخواننا وأحبابنا في كل مكان يا الله اللهم فرج عن هذه الدنيا يا الله اللهم فرج عنا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك اللهم أنت غفور ورحيم وكريم اللهم أنت عفو تحب العفو فعف عنا اللهم جعلنا من عتقاء رمضان اللهم جعلنا من عتقاء رمضان اللهم جعل اللهم من عتقاء رمضان اللهم اعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم ادخلنا في جنتك مع الأبرار يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر وارحم وتوب على المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم يا الله رد إليهم عقولهم يا أرحم الراحمين وزل عنا هذه الفتن اللهم وحد بين صفوفنا يا الله اللهم أزل المشاكل بين إخواننا في الخليج يا الله اللهم أزل هذه المشاكل اللهم وحد صفوفهم وألف بين قلوبهم يا الله اللهم ألف بين قلوبهم بكتابك يا الله وبسنة نبيك يا الله اللهم يا الله أنت تؤلف بين القلوب فألف بين قلوبنا اللهم جعل الألفة بين المسلمين اللهم جعل الألفة بين المسلمين اللهم احفظني 
نساءنا في كل مكان اللهم اغفر لاختنا نبرا يا الله اللهم تقبل منها يا الله اللهم اجعلها من الشهداء ومع الصديقين والنبيين الصديقين والشهداء والصالحين اللهم اجعلها في احسن الرفق يا ارحم الراحمين وخفف عن عن عائلتها يا الله وأهلها يا الله اللهم أحفظ مساجدنا في كل مكان من الاعتداء ومن العدوان اللهم يا الله إن كان بيننا مريضا فاشفيه يا الله وإن كان بيننا حزينا ففرج عنه وفرح قلبه يا الله اللهم يا رب العالمين أنت أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعل هذا النبي الكريم أحب الناس إلينا اللهم اجعل هذا النبي الكريم أحب الناس إلينا اللهم اجعله في قلوبنا اللهم اجعله في سلوكنا اللهم اجعله في أقوالنا وفي أفعالنا وفي أحوالنا يا الله اللهم اجعل هذا النبي الكريم يا الله أحب الناس إلينا اللهم اجعله مقبلا علينا يوم القيامة حينما يرانا مبتسما يا الله اللهم اجعله يأخذ بأيدينا ويسقينا من حوضه الشريف يا الله اللهم ادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا الله اللهم اغفر ورحم وتب على المسلمين اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد إنك قلت وقولك الحق إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما اللهم بارك في خرفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعده اللهم بارك في الصحابة المبشرين بالجنة وسبطي الجنة وأهل البيت يا الله اللهم بارك فيهم جميعا وصحبة رسول الله اللهم والتابعين وتابعهم وتابعنا بأحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أحفظ نساءنا وأولادنا بعدهم عن المخدرات وعن السفاح وعن الزنا يا الله اللهم بعدهم عن المنكرات التي تحيط بنا يا رحم الرحمين اللهم أحفظ هذا المسجد وقائمين عليه يا رحم الرحمين اللهم اجعل هذين الآخرين من من شهرنا أعظم الأيام في شهرنا يا الله اللهم اجعل الهمة في قلوبنا لكتابك يا رحم الرحمين اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا يا الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفه والسلام ونفسه الحمد لله رب العالمين قيم الصلاة